Well, after several months up in Canada exploring the Yukon and beautiful northern British Columbia, we are somewhere very different today. Stick around and we'll tell you more about this place and where we are. Today, we're gonna kayak up a river uh, with a handful of friends to explore the ruins of a once world famous archeological site. A place where archeologists unearthed uh, some ancient human remains that turned out to be among the oldest ever discovered. I'm pretty excited to dive into this discovery. It also happens to be a great place to unpack a lesson from Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount. It's a section in the Sermon on the Mount where he teaches about something that is really important to each and every one of you. Foundations. <laughs> yeah, wait, what? Yep, you heard it right. Foundations. As in what you build your house on. And you might be thinking about right now, looking at the scenery around me and archeological sites and all that stuff and thinking, I don't really see any houses and Aren't you at a river? I mean, how's this all gonna come together? You're gonna just have to trust me. We have a cool foundation surprise in store for you. Something no one has ever said, a cool foundation surprise. Like, is there such a thing? I don't know, you have to stick around and see if it's cool or lame, I don't know. We're gonna find out, but I think it's gonna come together and it's gonna help you understand one of the most famous lessons that Jesus ever taught. So let's go check it out. Hey, thanks for tuning in. My name is Thad and this is the Journey Church Online. And unlike a traditional church where you go to a building and sit down to listen to a sermon, we take a different approach. We bring you along with us as we travel to amazing places around the United States and Canada to help bring the Bible to life in a way that's engaging and interesting, and most importantly, makes sense. We take you to places like this. This is the confluence of the Palouse River and the mighty Snake River in remote Eastern Washington. There's a lot to learn here. It is an amazing location. We're gonna enjoy exploring it and bringing a lesson from the Sermon on the Mount to life in a way that hopefully really makes some sense for you. So back in the 60s, a local farmer in this exact area reached out to a college professor to ask him to come and take a look at some really interesting caves that seem to have some pretty obvious human artifacts uh, laying around like arrowheads and shards of pottery and, and things that the farmer thought might be of interest to this local professor. And so the professor came out and inspected these caves and quickly realized that this was a treasure trove of ancient artifacts. In fact, that cave that you can see right there is one of the most famous caves in this whole archeological site right here. And it took some time to spread the word and raise some funds to start a proper archeological dig here at this site. But eventually work began. And little did they know that what they would discover there turned out to be some of the oldest human remains ever found, even to this date. This skull cap belongs to the oldest human being yet found in the new world. His name is Marmus. For that is the name modern man has given him. This is Roel Frexell, geologist, anthropologist from Washington State University who discovered it. And this is the area in which he was discovered. Tonight, Exploration Northwest presents Marmus, Old Man of the Palouse. And so, all of a sudden, this remote cave in the middle of absolute nowhere was starting to seem like a pretty important place. The ancient floodplain which fronts the rock shelter have become a familiar sight to thousands. 
Once the cross trench had been cut, the excavations were expanded to reveal new areas of the Marmot Slayer. Each area was surveyed in and assigned a number. The digging proceeded by five foot squares. Each square meticulously documented and recorded. The crew, made up of postgrads for the most part, specializing in anthropology, average field experience, five years, had now reached the stage known as total recovery, a minutely painstaking job in which the greatest enemy is haste. Claudine Weatherford and Madge Gleason found the skull of a child who died 10,000 years before Christ was born. They called it Marmus II. Delicately, the layers of time are brushed away. While a nearby back hole, like some prehistoric creature, gouges huge chunks from the useless overburden. It can be said that an archaeological dig is a place where PhDs perform as heavy equipment operators, and a Harvard man can double his usefulness with the working knowledge of which lever to push. From backhoe to dustpan, it's a job for the experts. And even after all the larger objects are removed, the search goes on. There was a problem brewing, though, with this whole site. The Army Corps of Engineers had been working on a dam downriver behind me on the Snake River, and that dam was nearing completion in the late 1960s. So with the completion of that dam would come rising waters that would eventually back up in this Palouse River drainage that we're in and probably submerge this really important archeological site. Well, supporters sprung into action and they called on politicians to intervene. And at the last minute, there was an emergency effort to save the site from those rising waters. So the engineers, they put their heads together and they hatched a plan to protect this really cool site. And the plan involved building a massive earth dike around the base of that cave to keep the site dry and ensure that the archeologists could continue to dig and explore the site for years to come. Well, in 1969, the lower monumental dam on the Snake River was completed and the waters began to swallow up the land behind it. Worried scientists and engineers watched as the waters rose to the point where they finally filled in this reservoir here behind me and began to creep up that incredible dike that they built all the way around it. So the good news was the dike itself held firm. In fact, I'm standing on it right now, the thing that was built in the late 1960s. The bad news was the foundation that this dike was built on is all porous river rock beneath it. And so the water simply just filled in beneath the ground uh, underneath this foundation below the dike and then up and inside of the other side of the dike in the area that they wanted to try and keep dry. And so what happened was the area inside the levee filled at the exact same rate that the waters raised on the outside of the levee. Well, the barrier is still here. And it's still holding firm to this day. The foundation, however, failed right away. That site that they wanted so desperately to preserve unfortunately flooded and buried all of those archeological treasures that were yet to be discovered. Well, it turns out that the ground that you build on is pretty important. And that is the very thing that Jesus pointed out in the Sermon on the Mount. We see it in Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27. And this is what Jesus said. He said, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. 
though the rain comes in torrents and the flood waters rise against and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it's built on bedrock. But anybody who hears my teaching and does not obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. So whether you're building dikes like this one here or houses, the moral of the story is foundations are really important. Don't get lost taking this lesson from Jesus too literally, right? He's not really giving a house building lesson. Instead, what he's doing is using a parable. It's like a story about one thing to help you learn something else. In this case, it's a story about the importance of the kind of foundation that you build a house on so that uh, you can understand how you build your life as a Christian really matters. And so you can have a Christian walk that's tough and steady no matter what life brings, or you can have a Christian walk that falls apart when things get hard. But the important thing not to miss in this lesson from Jesus is the thing that really makes the difference. Why can some people have that solid, steady, stable faith that holds up in the storms of life while other people seem to just fall apart and give up on God when those hard times come? So the difference is hearing what Jesus taught and obeying it. If you do it that way, then you're going to be ready for the floods, ready for the storms, the crappy things that happen in life. If you hear the things that Jesus taught, but you don't really take the time to, to learn them and let them sink in, and then you don't really put any effort into doing those things that Jesus taught, well, that's going to create some really weak faith. Kind of like the person that maybe goes to the gym and they walk around and study every piece of equipment in the gym and they, they learn maybe what each device is for, but they never actually use them and put them into practice. You see, just knowing about the equipment in the gym doesn't actually get you in shape. It's not going to build any muscles. So digging into your Bible to discover what Jesus taught and then being intentional about learning how to live out what he taught and doing that in your life, that's the best way to be prepared for anything that comes your way. To have a, a real Christian walk that won't collapse when hard times come. And if you've been around very long, you know, hard times come. For a lot of people, I think they hear this teaching and then maybe think, okay, I mean, that does make sense, but where do I start? How do I figure out what Jesus taught? And I just want to say, if that's what you're thinking, awesome. 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 That is really cool. That's a, that's a great thing to be thinking. Like, how do I figure out what Jesus taught? There are so many great teachings from Jesus and they're super easy to find and start learning about right here in the Sermon on the Mount. And the great news for you is if you've stumbled across this video, we actually already have 15 episodes out breaking down the things that Jesus taught in the Sermon on the Mount to help you think through what he's teaching and then process and brainstorm ideas to actually live those things out and apply them in your own everyday lives. So. If you're ready to start storm-proofing your life, the best time to start is right now. And the best place to start is in the Sermon on the Mount. You can actually find all of our episodes where we've gone all throughout the Yukon and Canada and the uh, Canadian Rocky Mountains and Alaska to teach these lessons in the Sermon on the Mount over on our YouTube channel. Just jump on YouTube and type in at Your Jesus Journey and look for the SOMA series, Sermon on the Mount Alone. 
You're going to find those and a lot of other episodes there that we teach through the Bible in creative ways like this. If you want to learn more about us or find study guides to go along with any of our studies, you can always jump on our website. It's just yourjesusjourney.com. Pretty simple, easy to find, easy to navigate, tons of great resources there. We'd love to have you jump over and check it out. Well, hey, stick around. We are going to show you some footage from not only this archeological site, take a dive into that little cave over there with the drone and see what there is to see, but we're also gonna paddle way up the Palouse River and see if we can't find some other amazing scenery and ruins and waterfalls and all kinds of cool stuff to share with you before we send you off and home. So I hope you enjoy. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna go have some fun and try not to get wet. possibly go wrong. Cecil B. the Mills is about to fly his drone off a kayak. While his good wife <laughs> tows him back to camp. <laughs> <laughs> Success. <laughs> 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 